Good morning, YouTube family. It is Andrea here at VW Family Farm. Feels like it has been forever since I have filmed a video with you guys. And so I'm excited today. So it may look kind of foggy and gloomy out here to you guys, but actually this weather is so exciting to me. When I can wake up and put on a sweater and not be just sweating to death and come outside and it's a little cloudy and overcast and we've gotten a nice rain, it just tells me fall has finally arrived. So not too long ago, I was at our local dollar store and I saw this sign I wanna show you guys. I don't know if y'all can read it and it actually got wet and it's coming apart. I think it cost me like a couple bucks, but I loved it so much. I don't know if you could read it, but it says fall is proof that change is beautiful. And that's just what I've been thinking about lately, how much I resist change. I don't know about you guys, but change is not fun for me. It's not comfortable and I don't like it. And even sometimes that applies here on the farm as well. The summer work is hard, it's hot, it's sweaty, but I resist change sometimes just because it's what's comfortable for me. But I am realizing quickly after this first year of raising so many animals for proteins and things um, to sell, that change is gonna be a beautiful thing this year. So let's go around the farm today. I've got some feeding to do and we've had a lot change here lately and I wanna show you guys some of that. First off, let's start in the greenhouse. I just wanna give you a quick overview. We're not gonna spend a long time in here, but it is popping. Last thing I showed you, we are trying some pineapples for the first time. They're just some store-bought pineapples and we're gonna stick them in there and see if we can't grow some pineapples. I don't know if you noticed, we ripped out the papaya tree. It just never did do super well. We didn't get much off of it and it was taking up so much space. It was growing into the top of the greenhouse and it was taking up a lot of nutrients. So have to call it quits at some point on something that's not working. Another thing that's changing is Miss Pepper. I'm gonna do a whole video soon on Pepper, on her training. She's come a long way. She no longer even needs a leash when we go out to the cows. She obeys commands. She is doing fantastic. And we're hoping to be able to breed her for the first time this fall and have a litter of puppies we've been in contact with another breeder that breeds working Aussies. Uh, if you're interested in an Aussie, there's a big difference between a pet, pet bloodlines and working bloodlines. So be sure and look into that if you're looking to get an Aussie. Hey Pepper, what you doing girl? What you doing? Another thing that's changing is these chicks our chicks we raised that were freshly hatched this spring, they were a part of a 4-H project called the Poultry Chain that Lane and Emily were part of. They were supposed to exit our farm. Uh, you take three per child back to the fair in the fall, they judge them, and there's like tons and tons of kids that do this. Uh, we've gotten close before on winning. We've gotten um, what the judge told us was about third place, which doesn't receive anything, but he just told us, hey, y'all's were neck and neck with first and second place, so great job. Uh, but we've never won, and there's a reason they're still here. We won grand champion this year. It's so exciting. Lane actually is the official winner, but him and Emily came to an agreement years ago that they would do this together. And if one of them ever won, that they would split the money and the title. And so a couple weeks ago, Lane was in school. Emily and I actually are the ones that delivered them. And she chose who went in each cage. And she gave Lane the biggest ones because she knew they stood the best chance of winning. And this was his senior year. He graduated this past spring. This was his last shot. And so she knew if one of them was gonna win, it was gonna be that one. And she gave it to him and lo and behold, he won.
this is something i always try to throw in a fall garden video which this is not but it is a tour of the things going on on the farm but your tomato plants if they died and looked get dead maybe you even gave up on them and let hornworms kind of just destroy them like i did um, they will come back in the fall i'm going to take you down through here and you can see there's tons of new growth up on the top of these plants they will come back and they will produce you a fall crop just don't rip them out yet and you'll get more tomatoes next thing i want to show you is the farm truck the farm truck we got last year and then we wound up going and buying another truck for parts both of which were super old and beat up but we were so thankful to get it we used it all winter and then the plan has always been to this summer is to swap out a whole bunch of things on the truck we bought for parts to the farm truck and get it back running in time to put out hay this fall and ben has worked his tail off so he is on the last stages of finding the little things that are wrong that, I mean, it's a pretty big job to switch out all that he did. So he switched out the motor, the clutch, the pressure plate, the doors, the fender, sheet metal. He gave this thing an overhaul. It should be a really good truck when he gets done with it. And I actually had to follow him home from town the other day because he had to take it in. We took it in on a trailer to get some welding done on the exhaust or something. I'm just, I don't know these things, so could have some of this wrong, but then when they did that, it was drivable, so he drove it home, and I followed him just in case he had trouble, and I was driving behind him, watching him drive this 85 model truck down the road. I just thought how blessed I am to have a man that can do things like that, that can take two really old trucks and make a really good truck and figure out how to take it all apart and get it back together and it work and just figuring it all out on his own. And so I was just super proud of him. And I hope that you find things to be proud of your spouse about. Um, instead of, I know sometimes we just let people, our spouse especially, just get on our nerves. I'm sure I get on Ben's nerves and I know he does mine sometimes. It's just the way of life. But instead of focusing on that or just airing all our dirty laundry, if we would just find things to be thankful about and appreciate about them, it goes so far. We've got Gerard and his woman. She is due to have piglets any day. She's gonna be having Mangalitsa Old Spot Crosses. We're gonna give those um, one try and see how that goes raising those as piglets and as feeder pigs. And then we are possibly, we don't know yet, depending on how the piglets go, gonna offer them up for sale as a pair. So, uh, but that's been kind of fun, getting them um, and then just watching them grow and fill out and her, she's very large with, with child. So we're excited. I think they're gonna be super cute. Hopefully curly and spotted. And then uh, we got pairs of pigs all over the place around here right now. Hey, big pig! Hey, pig! So out there where I just fed, we've got Dot, Shorttail, and Big Mama. Dot's our breeder boar we got from Hidden Heights Farm. And then we've got Shorttail and Big Mama, our sows. And Big Mama had a litter a couple months ago. Shorttail is bred to Big Daddy, our big breeder boar that was our other boar that we lost here about two or three weeks ago. So that'll be our last litter from Big Daddy. Uh, we're sad about that, but we're probably going to leave some males uncut so that we can possibly keep one. And then um, I want to introduce you guys to someone out front as well, a new member of our farm. They decided to come up. There's Mr. Dot. He is getting big and looking real good. This is Big Mama. You can see how she's slimmed down in the sides after she's had piglets. Short tail's probably taking a nap. She's pretty big right now. But you can see Big Mama, she looks good even after we just weaned piglets off of her. 
doesn't she dot? She looks beautiful. And I found someone to help me. You ready? Yeah. I was gonna introduce them to our new member up in the front pen. You know the guy up there? Oh yeah. So I wanna introduce y'all to the new guy in town. His name is Henry. He's our new breeder boar. I promise y'all, it just worked out beautifully. We were so sick after we lost Big Daddy, but then we had someone just contact us out of the blue that they were gonna sell their old spot breeder boar. Two years old, he's super friendly, love him so much. Um, he's gonna be great for here at our farm. Right now he's separated just because um, Big Mama is with Dot and Short Tail's in there also, she's already bred to Big Daddy. So um, he's up here in a very secure pen, just getting used to our farm basically. There he is, he's a good boy, he's a good boy. You can see right now he's a little bit smaller than Dot, so he needs to stay up here, grow a little bit more, and um, because they will probably try to fight some. And so we may not even have them together. We'll probably have one sow and one boar together, but that just takes a lot of pens when you're, when you're breeding to certain boars and sows, trying to produce breeding pairs for people. That just takes more and more pens. So we're still working on all that. And in fact, when we bought Henry, we bought five of his sons as well. So we've got them up here, six that we just weaned off of Big Mama. So there's 11 piglets and Henry in this pen. And they are so cute. <laughs> Everybody out of here? And there they go. So we just hauled off a load of pigs from up there and now it's full again. Things are just constantly changing around here. Another big change, the cluck wagon has come home for the winter. So this is literally out in our front garden and it's gonna do a couple things. We have all of this fall crop that when Ben bush hogged it down is coming back. They can eat that, scratch around in it and all those things. And they're fertilizing the garden. And it's closer to the house for us to do chores and gather eggs. So it's gonna be a great thing. And another thing that's changing, the cluck wagon is getting a paint job. Another thing that's changing now that it's fall is egg production. So if you saw your eggs drop off in the heat of the summer when it was hot and maybe dry, the weather just got kind of miserable, then your egg production probably slowed way down. But now that it's starting to cool off, it should pick back up. I have people ask me that quite often, like how do you keep your chickens laying? Well, number one, if they stopped or slowed way down, up their feed just a bit. Make sure that you're feeding enough. We feed about a quarter of a pound per chicken. Now I have a ton of chickens, so I don't actually count them, but I just estimate. So I have a lot of chickens, like for 200 chickens, I feed about 50 pounds, but they pay me back in eggs that I then turn around and sell and make that money back on that feed. I know that seems like a lot of feed, but they make it back in eggs. And so I would just encourage you, hold on for one. They're probably gonna pick back up, maybe give them a little extra feed and I bet you'll see some results. Another huge, gigantic change for this fall is the schooner is empty. Here it is, it's October, and we have completed our poultry raising for this summer. We raised 1,200 meat chickens, and we raised about 75 turkeys. Uh, we lost some along the way, but that's the amount we started with on both. It is now empty. There was a time Lane and I were carrying by bucketfuls, 80 gallons a day in here, the first batch of chickens we raised. Quickly made improvements and installed a water line that automatically watered them. It worked great. And we were using all kinds of different feeders until we settled on the ones that worked the best. We learned so much. It was tough, it was hot. We bled, we yelled, we cried, we complained, but we persevered. And I feel like we made it till fall on our first year of raising birds on a big scale for us. The most we had ever raised before was like 200. So to have went from 200 to 1200 on the chickens alone, 
it's a monumental deal for us. We feel so good about it. Uh, we have so much chicken in the freezer now. We have turkeys at the processor. We did that a couple nights ago and we were out here at like 11 o'clock at night loading turkeys only to get up at like four something the next morning to haul them. But hey, that's what it's all about is the end of the season. All your hard work paid off and you have a quality product or maybe you're just raising food for yourself and you get to the end of the season and you just feel so accomplished that you provided things for yourself. Either way, change can be beautiful. And I can't end this video without showing you my favorite farm animal, the cows, and some of our newest babies. We're still having babies and that is just a beautiful change that never gets old. I just want to end this video by saying I feel so incredibly blessed and grateful to be able to live this life that I live here on this farm. It's my dream. I feel like I'm living out my dream and I hope that you guys are too. Your, your dream may not be farming or gardening or uh, maybe it is but you're not doing any of those right now for different reasons or whatever. But I just encourage you as we enter this new season to embrace the change. Whatever that looks like for you, whether you're in a hard transition, your kids have grown up, you've lost a loved one, um, you're going through an illness yourself, like there's some really weighty things going on in the world right now. Um, but just try to take a moment and look around at the things that you do have and to realize that um, change can be beautiful and that you are gonna come out stronger on the other side. Emily has a shirt that's three butterflies and it's the different stages of it becoming a beautiful butterfly and it says change is beautiful and I'm just trying to remind myself of that as Lane has graduated he's in college now things have changed he's not here as much uh, my life has been devoted to my kids for the past literally 18 and a half years I have been mom that's been my primary role is homemaker and now we're entering this new season and that can be that can be challenging it can be depressing if you let it but it can also be beautiful and exciting and fun and it's it's a once in a lifetime stage that I'm in in my life right now as well just like the little kid years were um, this time won't last either Lane and Emily will grow up and more than likely marry and have families of their own but the fact is they are still kids at this time and so I just encourage you embrace the change embrace the change of seasons embrace the changes in life and find the beauty in it because it can be beautiful I love you guys and appreciate you and I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching and God bless. Iron Man has been like watching me. I think my speech was like really inspiring to him or something. He just stood and watched so patiently. What do you think, dude? What are you thinking? Come here. Come here. Come on. Come on. You want some loving? Come on. Are you going to walk off? You gonna walk off? I see in your eyes. See you later. <laughs>